So the rack of packings are put together here. They service the top of the pump. The rack of packings for the lower end are the same. They all rack together the same way I showed you these, these top ones. Now that's leather and Teflon. So if I was using leather and Teflon, they would go in a cup like so, a very, very clean container, and you would put throat seal oil, TSL, throat seal oil in there and soak them for at least 10, 15 minutes before using them. So the important thing is you keep all this together and keep it clean. So that's a leather and Teflon packing kit. What I'm going to show you now is a tough stack, a PTFE. So a PTFE, polyfluorotetraethylene, is, a, is the composition of the packing themselves which will give you a little bit more longevity in relation to service life of the pump itself. So you notice that these ones are black. Notice these ones are blue and brown. So it makes it easy for us to identify what they are. And as I mentioned with these pumps is there is a set of packings racked together for you that work in conjunction with each other. So let's count the packings that we've got. We've got a retainer. One, two, three, four, five. There's five there. Okay, so five on the top. And there'll be five in this one as well. One, two, three, four, five. Now, do I need to do anything significant with these before I put them in? Absolutely. It's the same scenario. So with those particular ones, the same deal. They go into, you don't have to worry about soaking the retainers, of course, but they go into the container and TSL on there, let them soak for a few minutes. What it does is ensures that in the seal itself, there is lubrication between each packing. It's important that there's lubrication there because when they come together and squash, that lubrication will ooze out onto, in this case, the piston. These packings, they're what we call chevron seals or sergeant seals. That's derived from the two lips that face the pressure. So you've got a conical or con convex type shape and two lips. So those two lips always face the pressure. Now one of my learned friends did show me that the Graco insignia also identifies which way your packings go. So if ever you forget and you can't find the instructions which way the packings go, the G is indicative to the way or the, the, the support mechanism for your packings, which way they go in there. So the G facing down at the top represents the packers at the top facing down, and the G at the bottom represents the, fac the packers facing up. So at the top, the G, packers facing down, packers facing up. So if you ever forget, just look back at this, and that gives you an indication of which way they go. Instinctively, you would use this, which is a pack and repair instruction as to how it all goes together. That's the best way to do it. However, if you do lose those, just remember, there's five packings at the top, five packings at the bottom, and the two lips always face the pressure. So after you've soaked these, and you have the retainers, they're ready to go back together. Now just go back one step when I said that we want to identify the wear on the piston. So this piston, the packings at the top, as I mentioned, are static packers. So what that does is, or what that resembles is, the fact is that these top packs, or rack of packs, they don't move. They're sustained within the top of the, the piston itself, a uh, piston body, or the housing. So what we're looking to do now is we want to check to see what the wear factor is on the piston stem. So with this, this type of packing is the better one to identify the wear because they're a lot more taut 
in, in the integral wall strength uh, to give you an indication of wear factor. So what we do is we slide that down the piston and then we follow it all the way down and check to see whether the gap is the same from top to bottom. As I mentioned, when these pistons wear, they'll get a step in them. So they'll come down and there'll be a step, then you'll see it's worn in slightly. So when you slide this packer down, you will see there'll be no gap and then all of a sudden you'll see a big gap around it. So that identifies wear on there. How much is too much wear? Well, ultimately, if that packing is really loose and you can see a lot of gap in there, that means that when you put these packings back in that gland nut and you tighten that castellated nut to increase torque on those packings to make sure that they flare to seal onto the piston, it's quite a significant distance for it to be crushed to seal. So ultimately, you'll only get a very short life out of the packings because there's significant wear in this. Can you measure this with a, with a, a appropriate gauge to see the wear factor? Absolutely. I have, I, I normally, I'll, I'll measure the top, the bottom, and then take a measurement up through the stem to see what the wear factor is. But if you don't have a set of verniers, basically what you'll do is you'll just use the packers as an indication for wear. So on site, do you have a pair of verniers? No, I don't. Ultimately just slide the packing down the shaft and check for the gap between the inside edge and the piston itself to see what the wear factor is. In this case, the wear factor, the, the, the distance or the gap between the packing and the, and the piston itself is the same all the way from top to bottom. So this piston itself, irrespective of having a little mark on it, which we've rubbed out, is in quite good repair. So there's still a lot of light life left in this piston. So I'm pretty happy with that. On the bottom of the piston you have, there's your second set of rack of packers themselves. So top packings, bottom packings, and inside, that's your secondary ball. That, that is a valve, so that's your secondary ball valve, which seals on the pressure side before it delivers out the airless paint line. So this has to come off the stem of the piston itself. So now we have to be very, very careful that we don't damage this. So if we're on site, what would we do? Because we don't have a vise, ultimately what you'll do is, with some rag or even a piece of cardboard, put it around this piston stem and you'll wrap it fastidiously to ensure that you don't sustain any damage to that cylinder. You damage that, that piston, sorry, if you damage the piston, that's it, you're, you're in trouble because you can't expect any longevity from the pump itself if you've damaged any of this. So with that wrapped up, what we'll do now is, because we're on site, we don't have a vise, you can use a large shifter to undo, or hold, I should say, hold the piston itself, like so. So you've got some means of support here for yourself without hurting yourself. Now, what can I use? Can I use a shifter to do that? Well, a 12 inch shifter, as you can see, struggles to get over that. So I, I don't have anything bigger than a 12 inch shifter. What do I do? Nothing else. So sometimes we don't have any choice but to use items like this. But just remember, if you use Stilson's or something that's aggressive on this metal and the, the integral aspect of this, you can always dress it and clean it back up again to make sure that there's no sharp edges. So on site, when I haven't had a vise, I have no choice but to use a pair of Stilson's to undo this. Now this will be tight because when it's assembled, it's assembled with a little bit of Loctite. So what you'll need to do is you need to crack it. So there's no point in trying to push it to get it undone. So what you need to do is crack it. So what you'll do is you'll bring your hand up and crack it undone like so. Now be careful with the jaws that they don't punch back onto this edge. And as I say, if you have to, Get a file and just tidy this back up again where you had the jaws of the Stilsons. So slide the Stilsons out of the way. And now you can undo the piston stem, which has the existing packings, a retainer, a threaded section. And this is now is a seat and out of the piston comes the ball. So again, 
It's a 316 ball that's had a fair bit of, of wear or exposure and you can see that it's no longer shiny as you can see in these by comparison to the kit. So there you go, there's the difference, look at the difference. So this one's done some work. Again, I run my thumbnail around this to find if there's any wear in it. Why would I bother doing that? Because I have a brand new one here. What we're looking for is if there's any significant damage to this ball, that means that we have to check to see if there's any damage in the seat. So it's a tungsten carbide seat. Is, there, is it possible that I can damage it? Absolutely, a piece of blue metal under compression is enough to impregnate the seat itself, so it leaves a mark in the seat and this ball no longer seals in there.